Hey, welcome to another episode of Music Tips and Reviews with JG. Appreciate y'all for watching. Please appreciate y'all for tuning in. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So you'll be updated on all my latest content. Uh, steadily growing, trying to make it to 7,000 subscribers. Uh, appreciate the support. Uh, also has Super Chat also available during this premiere. So uh, if you want to, you know, support my channel, please do so. And also, uh, you know, a lot of people have been uh, requesting me to react to certain uh, videos, certain music. Uh, you know, I have paid to react. Got paid to react if you want me to uh, react uh, to something. Uh, you know, I have paid to react. So I uh, appreciate y'all for y'all support. So uh, if you want me to react to a song, uh, send me a cash app, dollar sign J Gills VA, uh, with the request what video or song you want me to react to, and I'll get to it as soon as possible. And so, uh, as I promised, I said I was gonna come back with uh, part two of this documentary about uh, Michael Jackson versus the music industry. Uh, you know, it was a struggle between him and Sony. Um, he owned fifty percent of sony atv uh so he he owned a lot of of catalogs uh including the Be the beatles uh elvis um so many more so many more artists um that's on sony atv you know there's major labels like universal sony um and other ones and uh he owned half of sony atv so uh this is part two you know why the music music industry felt threatened by Michael Jackson uh, reaction. Uh, shout out to XLNS Music YouTube channel. Check out their channel. Have a lot of great music documentaries up there. Uh, and I thought I'd just react to uh, these videos with you all, but support their channel XLNS Music. Very great content. Uh, so we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. Uh, and I appreciate, I always appreciate the support and love. And uh, this is going to be interesting. I haven't seen this one yet, uh, part two. So this is my first time watching it with you guys. So let's check it out. Yo, I spoke strictly about facts and how MJ owned 50% of Sony ATV. In this video, I'm going to go deeper into whether or not Sony actually did feel threatened by MJ's power in the industry. Some people claim that he was being targeted in wow. a grand conspiracy when he was alleged for sexual misconduct. Precisely. So basically, you know, it's, it's like they, uh, and a lot of people, you know, speculate that, that he was set up uh, even before his death, way before his death, you know, with these uh, SA uh, child uh, situations. Uh, with these kids at his uh, Neverland Ranch and, you know, so forth, child allegations. So people thought that was a setup as well. Because he started becoming too big as a one-man army. My point in the last video was to show, as a matter of fact, how Michael Jackson ended up owning 50% of Sony ATV. Yeah. It was an informational video. In this video, and that was I a have great to part be honest, one. I'm going to go into a theory which might not be true, but is definitely plausible. Wow. It's easy to go for general ideas about this, especially on the internet where anyone can say anything. Yeah. But to get first-hand material from people that were involved in important aspects of Michael Jackson's career, I had to go deeply into the subject, reading close to seven books in depth about Michael Jackson. In the last book I read, journalist Aphrodite Jones, who initially was against Michael Jackson, working for the big media machine, had change of mind after Michael Jackson won the... And they knew a whole lot of people was... Uh, you know, for Michael, fans of Michael, uh, you know, Michael was an entity in himself. I heard stories, uh, shout out to Dallas Austin, uh, great music producers. He was talking about when he was working with him, like he'll work on him and then he'd be going to London. He'd be going to all parts of the world. You know, he was like, where Michael at? But he was so big. Uh, he had so many, you know, if you see these videos, he had like a whole army behind him in different places. And so they, you know, it, it it could be true. You know, they was, uh, you know, so threatened by him. They tried to, you know, cause things against him. The trial. 
She claimed that she had a suspicion that the allegations were in part coming in, as I said, because Michael Jackson owned 50% of Sony ATV, getting yeah. royalties from artists such as Bob Dylan, The Beatles, Eminem, and other major superstars. Yeah. In one of the pages in her book, Michael Jackson Conspiracy, where the theme is his 2005 court hearings, she even said she talked to Tom Mesereau, the attorney that defended Michael Jackson, about whether or not this could be the case. Yeah. Now, Tom Mesro is a very respected attorney and won the case back in 2005, a case that the media and much of the world thought was lopsided against Michael Jackson. This is not a nobody. When he says, if Michael were in jail or prison, how would he defend his ownership in the catalog? Sony had so much to gain if there was a conviction, as Snedden would have gained celebrity status. These Yeah, and so, you know, they, they were trying to, you know, put him in prison and stuff like that. Because, you know, they could possibly, you know, take hold of those, uh, you know, those assets, uh, it, you know, take control of the, the publishing, the Sony ATV uh, publishing. So it, it was a it was a huge thing. And it's, it's very possible, very possible. These people did not actually have to sit together to conspire together. They might have helped each other on an unplanned level. Another example from the same chapter in that book was when Reverend Al Sharpton and Michael Jackson talked on a radio broadcast. They spoke about a lot in that broadcast, Mike crying out that he was innocent among others. I remember others. that. Yeah, One I remember of the more that. interesting paths the conversation took was when Al Sharpton then asked him. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, that was, I saw that on uh, YouTube, Michael, you know, he was going at it with Sony and Tommy Mottola and stuff like that. About whether or not this whole thing could have had something to do with the Sony ATV acquisition. Michael didn't want to go down that road. He was, as the book states, quote, clearly afraid to discuss the subject. And he only said one thing about the Sony ATV catalog, and quote, it's very valuable. It's worth a lot of money. And there's a big fight going on as we speak about that. I can't comment on it. There's a lot of conspiracy. I'll say that much, end quote. He definitely especially you know especially him being a black man even though you know even though his skin changed you know even though his skin changed he still considered african-american uh and they you know they could they could be threatened by that as well uh i'm just wondering i'm just wondering uh if he was another race uh would they try to do these things to michael uh, and leave it, leave your, your thoughts as you watch this, leave your thoughts as you, uh, watch this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this situation as well. Let me know. He does not say that the Sony ATV acquisition specifically was the reason for these allegations, but he doesn't deny it either. It's hard to say. But if we backtrack a bit, and this is probably something most MJ fans already have a feel for, it's worth mentioning though, it was after the acquisition of the ATV part of the company that the media specifically started going against him. In the thriller and off the wall era, Michael was a media darling, being a role model for everyone in America. But it was during the bad era that things turned for the worse. Not significantly worse though, as the child abuse allegations started around 92. Yeah, when well, you, you know... When you start getting that power and uh yeah you gain that power especially in the music industry uh they want to you know have all types of allegations towards you uh you know not saying that these things might not be true you know as far as these child allegations and all this stuff but y'all have to realize you know michael he didn't really experience his childhood and so he was around all these children because uh, you know, he didn't experience a child. That's, that's why he built uh, his amusement park and stuff like that. But uh, I think he just had to come to the realization that he couldn't do that. You know, he couldn't hang around all these children, you know, because people would think he's doing, you know, inappropriate things with these kids. But Michael had to realize that he was a, a adult now, so he couldn't do all that stuff. Uh, and you know it's a lot of stuff i might do a reaction uh to oprah and michael jackson interview but he was talking about his childhood where he really didn't experience a lot you know as far as being a child you know in his lifetime 
But still, the bad era was a period that the media started making up a lot of rumors about him. And this is not something that MJ fans don't know. Bad came out in 87. He had a big break between Thriller, which came out in 82, and Bad, where he simply just disappeared, like Kendrick has done nowadays. And I need that album, Kendrick. But in the middle of that gap, when he was relatively inactive musically, that was when he acquired the ATV catalog. 50% of Sony ATV, aka the Beatles catalog, amongst other, one of the most valuable catalogs in the world. Wow. As he, in 87, was relatively gone from the spotlight, the media had no chance of reporting on him. But as he entered the scene again in 87, things started heating up. He was suddenly reported as a weird figure. Wow. And the media gave him nicknames such as Wacko Jacko, which was a stark contrast to the image the media had of him in 82. The creative outcome of this is and it didn't help either you know his skin change and stuff like that you know he started getting a lot of surgeries but he you know believe it or not he did have surgeries around thriller as well you can tell in his nose and stuff like that but uh you know it, it all that came at all at one time uh as far as his image and then him owning sony atv uh yeah that was really threatened by that the song leave me alone the prototype to parts of dangerous and really the prototype for the whole i was going to talk about that song too leave me alone his relationship to the media for the first yeah. time really is a theme so his first media themed song happened right after the acquisition of the atv catalog is that a coincidence or uh, i mean maybe i think there are many ways to look at the situation did Sony, for instance, donate money to the news outlets? I'm not saying that the allegations came because of any Sony agenda. Most likely, the Arviso family and the Chandler family were money hungry and saw an opportunity in Michael. But it's definitely not unthinkable that corporations... And that's the question that these, you know, people know how Michael and how generous and how... I wouldn't say soft, but he was, he was, his, his mannerisms was very gentle. Uh... That's why they took advantage of him. You know, these families, you know, they took their kids to Neverland and all this stuff. Uh, of course, Michael welcomed them in because he had a whole, like, amusement park, you know, <laughs> in his backyard. Uh, I wonder if they, they had a, a plot or a plan uh, with all of this, all of this, you know, carrying their kids over there and knowing that, you know, Michael Jackson had this childlike uh, behavior you know was it purposeful uh and y'all let me know you know let me know what y'all think about that such as sony big corporations that are financially extremely powerful have the capacity to donate money to media outlets i mean bill gates is someone who has done that lately bill gates is one person rich and wealthy yes but sony is a fully fledged corporation in their prime when messing with mike Perhaps they operated completely independently of the families that came with allegations, but fueling fire to the flame once the flame were hot. In some, the platform for negative coverage is set. Allegations are in. Now let's take this opportunity to maybe donate to the news outlets. In many ways, if Sony was to get the catalog back, now was the time. While the So it seems like over time, you know, when you kind of go against the norm or the rulership of these labels, uh... In a way, they try to set up things against you. That's what I'm seeing over, you know, uh, the change of time. You know, they blackmail you. If you do one little bad thing, you know, they, they'll publicize it. You know, not st saying, you know, a lot of these things, even like this Diddy situation, you know, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a good thing. You know, what he did, did he, you know, did he did. Uh, it wasn't a good thing. It was a harsh thing. But was it publicized because of something he did against the music industry? You know, who knows? So uh, it's something to think about even watching this video. Uh, like I said, not excusing what Diddy had, has done. But, you know, is it a plot, you know, when they go against the industry to do these things?
allegations were happening. Not sooner, because no acquisition of Sony ATV had happened in Michael's case, and certainly no allegations had happened either. And not too late, because the allegations were coming in at that precise moment in time. But at the same time, it's not reasonable to think that Sony would contribute to hurting Michael's sales, as this would hurt their own profits. This is most likely not something they would be willing to do, especially since he was in his prime. Contributing to giving him bad coverage would hurt their profits as well. So I'll exclude this theory. It's not likely. Also, there's no proof of Sony donations to media outlets. What about Sony associations to news media outlets? Does Sony own or associate with anything that can classify as news media? The only connections I have been able to make is that Sony bought CBS aka Columbia Records in, you guessed it, 1987, two years after the ATV acquisition. CBS Records was a subsidiary of CBS Viacom who owns CBS News and wow. CBS Radio. But this is hardly anything worth speculating about. In my opinion, it's a reach and not too much to base things on. But if we are reaching to be the... And you think about like uh, Bill Cosby. I think he was trying to own NBC or one of those. Uh, he was trying to own and they, you know, all these things came against him. So it's kind of it's kind of strange, kind of strange. Devil's advocate in this case, and you know, if if Sony connect with CBS, that means Michael will be real powerful, and they will really be against him. So it's interesting. There is a loose connection between a big part of news media and Sony. A reach, most likely. And as I've said earlier. They would very likely not have hurt their own sales by indirectly giving him bad coverage, but it is possible. If we set aside the allegations against MJ and keep Sony disconnected from them, mm -hmm. there is another way to look at the situation. After his death, Sony in fact did buy the ATV part of the catalog back. In 2016, they bought it back. Mm, that's, in that's interesting. That's interesting. You know, they, you know. This, his death is very interesting. Wow. For 750 million, 10x the price MJ bought it for originally in 85. Mm -hmm. We have to remember, being as lucrative as a catalog this was, Michael likely would not have sold it if he was still alive. But this was done via the Michael Jackson estate, an estate that logically could not have been overseen by MJ because he was gone. It was overseen by John Brank, as it had been since the beginning. But with Michael not being and I think it was after Neverland Ranch as well. They probably bought, wanted to buy that property. So, hmm, this is interesting, interesting, interesting. Being here, Branca had full control over the negotiations. Sony triggered a clause that allowed either side to buy out the other side. And that happened. These are facts. Michael died. Sony bought back ATV. Nothing spooky here. The conspiracy and mystery is as to whether or not Sony contributed to his death, not only to be able to buy the catalog back, hmm. but also for sales to pick up. Uh oh. Michael and Tommy Mottola, head of Sony Music, have never been on the best terms, but things were okay when Sony of Japan head Masao Morita was still alive, as he claimed he would protect Michael from Mottola if something was up. Uh -oh. Morita was the guy wow. that had the upper hand in their relationship, being loyal to Michael. After Morita's death though, is when things started boiling between Motola and Michael, as Mike now had no one from Sony keeping him safe. Michael coming with some words about Motola and how This is interesting, this is interesting. Labels deliberately sabotaged their artists for more power. Sharpton was saying, people from James Brown to Sammy Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that, uh, that inspired me to be the entertainer that I am. These artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they would totally go broken. Yeah. And uh, it's been, the record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can, especially the black artists. Yeah, and, and Mike is right. You know, these, these labels, they don't care about these artists. Uh, sometimes they make them compete against each other. Sometimes they just, you know, they find talent. If they see a little talent or image in you, they use you. And when you dry out, they just spit you out. You know, they just get rid of you. Uh, 
like he said, you know, that's why a lot of these artists like Rihanna, Beyonce, so many artists, they get into other ventures, you know, hairlines, clothing, uh, just so many, you know, streaming platforms, uh, you know, sponsoring different products. Uh, they get into these things because they don't get a lot of money just from touring uh, because a lot of that money goes to the manager, uh, commission, you know, things like things of that nature. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Sony Tommy Matola. Tommy Matola is the president of the record division. He is a mean, he's a racist, uh -oh. <laughs> and he's very, very, very devilish. But there's a reason for why MJ is so outspoken about this. He was coming with these claims because he did not get the licenses of the masters of his album as wow. he had a contract that set the date for a version several years later. He saw the bigger picture when he said that the labels purposefully destroyed their artists. Wow. He saw the pattern and wanted out. He was looking for an early exit from his contract with Sony, demanding one even. The rift thus got bigger and then continued with Sony denying Invincible the promotional budget of the other albums, literally not having any promotion. And I remember that, you know, Invincible album came out. Uh, of course, you know, people bought the album because it was uh, Michael Jackson, but it didn't really have a, a lot of promotion. You know, it came out with one video, only one video from that album. Uh, you Rock My World. And that's that's about it, you know. Uh, like I said, ten million albums sold. So that's 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 crazy. That's crazy, you know. The greatest entertainer, king of pop of all time, you know. It's crazy. Little work done in the U.S. It's still selling ten million, by the way. The conspiracy is that Sony deliberately sabotaged his Invincible album to force him into bankruptcy and debt, making him sell his part of the ATV catalog. And that's sadly how it ended. Wow. When it comes to the last days of Michael, and how some people say that Sony were interested in him, dead than alive, and the whole conspiracy of forcing him. And they said like last, you know, years of his life, he felt like he was just hopeless. You know, they just destroyed him. Uh, you know, he was going on that tour, This Is It tour. But uh, yeah, and they, and they left him in debt. They left him in debt him to sell the ATV part by him being in debt. I mean, he was broke in 2008-2009 and also in debt in his last days. Wow. Because of that, he had to clear that debt one way or another. In some way, Sony's plan, if the alleged conspiracy theory is true, worked. The This Is It concerts were a way for him to pay off that debt. Now, yeah. I don't believe Sony directly caused his debt well, back to them to cover his debt is not improbable. Some people say that Dr. Murray, the doctor responsible for manslaughter and Mike, was hired by Sony, but this is not true. Yeah, a lot of people thought that uh, A AEG group, A yeah, AEG group, they thought he was, uh, you know, hired by them, you know, Sony. AEG, so. the ones behind the This Is It concerts, hired him for Michael. And this is a whole different conspiracy that AEG wanted him dead than alive making more from his death than the actual air rehearsals. Michael's concerts have been filmed as separate pieces before, and you can see on the Another Part of Me Wembley performance that this is far more appealing than mere rehearsals. Isn't the hype of an actual concert more worth filming than rehearsals? The rational side of me says that the movie were supposed to be additional releases after the concerts, talking about the more behind the scenes aspect of the experience. But it you know, if y'all haven't checked out This Is It uh, movie, Check that out. That was, that was really good. You know, you can see MJ interact with uh, his musicians and stuff like that. Something doesn't add up. Besides this, though. And that's, you know, thinking about that, though, I was thinking about the Whitney Houston mu movie uh, that came out uh, when I danced with somebody. Uh, that was interesting how, uh, you know, Clive and them put that movie out uh, after she died, you know. It starts, you know, to make you question, you know, did they just want to get money out of the family, money out of their estate, uh, as far as putting these movies out after they die. And uh, this is interesting about Columbia and, and Sony. I didn't know that happened. So, wow, this is this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. 
there are several other questions I want to look at. One of the questions I have is, after Mike's death, what actually triggered the clause in Sony's contract that says that either side could buy the other, aka Michael's ATV part? Who and what decided that? And why? Mike also had an attorney who was also the attorney of Sony. Michael didn't know about this until he wanted out. How did he get to that position and who was he? I haven't found the answer to these questions and there are many more. But if I do find out, I'll probably make a part 3 to dive even deeper. Iceberg style. That's it guys. So that was uh, part 2. Uh, I'm going to react to part 3 as well. I'm going I'm to come back and uh, react to that part. But uh, this is very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, like I said, check out their documentaries on XLNS Music. Uh, YouTube channel uh, yeah it gives you a lot of questions you know was his death purpose pur purposeful uh, or was it an accident you know it just happened naturally uh, you know did they want to take uh, his ownership away uh, you know was he kind of you know they were trying to fight against him you know on his last album uh invincible you know it's a lot of questions so appreciate y'all for tuning in uh love reacting to these videos and it makes you question a lot of things about the music industry and so uh yeah leave your comments what you thought about this uh part two uh why the music industry felt threatened by michael jackson so appreciate y'all for tuning in and until next time all right peace